Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of Los Angeles Bias. As usual, I'm your host Russell here at the University of Southern California, if you couldn't tell by all the stuff I have in the background. Um, okay, so this episode will be going over the USC versus Oregon State game, which happened this last Saturday. The USC Trojans won by a score of 38 to 10, not quite reaching those Vegas odds margin of victory of 30, so they ended up winning by 28. But uh, I have just a tiny bit of an episode for you all this week. Uh, I was not able to go to the game. It was actually my mom's birthday. Oh, yeah. That's really cute. That's really cute. Guys, hey, this past weekend so I was at home celebrating with her um, big shout out to my mom obviously happy birthday thank you for everything you've done for me and I really hope you enjoyed the weekend I hope you had a great time and you know cheers to many many more years close enough but okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this really kind of weird game. It's weird in the sense that this was USC's de facto bye week. I mean, we do not have a bye week until, well, if we were to play for the Pac-12 championship, we do not have a bye week until the week before that championship game, which I think was maybe slightly intentional, but at the same time, it really has been hurting USC. We needed a break so many injuries on the offensive line so many injuries to our receiving core and everything like that it's really started to you know come up on us which causes us to lose a week ago at Washington State so playing Oregon State who is statistically one of the worst teams not just in the Pac-12 but in the nation <laughs> we needed this we needed this but by no means was this meant to be like some like just okay walk over there go play it's gonna be whatever no we still needed to come out and like show the nation hey we're still the usc trojans and even though we won by what four touchdowns it didn't feel that way both sides oregon state and usc did not play well whatsoever usc looked sluggish they looked sloppy I I, I I didn't get to see most of the game, but the bit, bits and pieces that I saw, I was just like not that impressed. There were a couple times here and there where it was like, okay, there we go. Like it, it's a, such a USC thing to have a spectacular first drive. You you know Sam Darnold he caps it off with just a dime to Tyler Vaughn's. I mean like and it was great to see Tyler Vaughn's go out there and make an amazing catch and everything like that. But it was beautiful. It was like a 30 yard touchdown. I was like, okay, there we go. This game's gonna be put away super fast, super easy. And it was, but after that there never felt like there was a time where I was just like, okay, USC is back, we're fine, we're gonna go into next week, absolute dominant. No, I did not feel like that whatsoever throughout this game. In fact, let's go ahead and just talk about Darnold. He uh, I mean if you would have looked at Twitter during this game, you would have seen like people would have thought he should have been benched. I mean, people were saying like, "Oh, bring bring in Matt Fink. Let let's burn the red shirt of Jack Sears. No, let's let's get him in. Sam Darnold can't play." It's like what was going on? He's just he doesn't look like the same quarterback from last year. The guy that was like out there putting up these crazy numbers, no interceptions, just touchdowns, such a making these insane plays with his feet. He's just not looking like that. He threw an interception to Oregon State, a team that just seems to despise turnovers. That just they just will give you the ball but then not take the ball from you. He threw an interception to Oregon State. Yes, he did have three touchdowns. Uh, one to Deontay Burnett, which is always nice, the one to Tyler Vaughn's, and then a very nice touchdown to uh, Josh Follow, uh, freshman tight end. It's always really cool to see, you know, USC using a tight end. I think the tight end, especially at USC, is a very, is a very underused weapon. Uh, I really think we should get them more in there. Of course, with the injuries to, like, you know, Daniel Marabebe, that's in, and Tyler Petit, you know, it's been hurting our tight end usage, but I think we need to get them in there a lot more. But all things considered, you know, Sam, he only had a, you know, he had a good game, but he could have, should have had. A better game so 316 yards three touchdowns one interception uh, thir 23 for 35 it's like okay like he should be putting those numbers against putting up those numbers against good teams not Oregon State's so there's a lot to work on there rushing wise um, you know it looks like we kind of gave Ron Jones a bit of a break which I totally understand we don't want him to get injured Stephen Carr was not playing <clears throat> so Ron Jones ended up having uh, 12 attempts for 79 yards and a very nice touchdown. You know, just kind of a nice, easy day. But we kind of underused the rush game in, in throughout the entire game. It was just like 
we wanted to make Sam throw as much as we could. I mean, we have so many, so many amazing running backs that we just underuse. And for some reason, we just didn't want to get them in the game. I'm not sure what's going on with the play calling right now. And that's actually something Sam Darnold brought up in his post-game interview. He thinks maybe we need to work on the play calling. We Right now, we have three quarter, past quarterbacks working with the play calls, working with the offense. And I think that needs that may need to change. We may need to get like some new, not some new blood, but some... I don't know, a little bit of diversity going on in our <clears throat> offensive meetings, our offensive play calling. But hopefully that can all change going up against a very good rush defense in Utah this upcoming week. Uh, defensively, I mean, our defense has quickly become the story of the season. Uh, it was supposed to be our offense with Sam Darnold, Ron Jones, and all those receivers. But no, it's really turned into Cam Smith, the linebackers, our DBs. Like Jack Jones had another interception, played very well this week. Uh, it's really become the uh, defensive show here at the University of Southern California. They've become our saving grace. They really have. I mean, they're just turnovers on top of turnovers. They're starting a bakery up in here. I'm, I'm going to take credit for that joke. I don't know if it was very good, but I'm going to totally take credit for it. Um, but, you know, it's our defense. Our defense is playing extremely well. It's almost exciting to kind of see the defense out there because you're just expecting, you know, Ichena Nwusu to just get in there, cause a tip pass, cause, a, you know, a forced fumble on a sack. You're just expecting Cam Smith to just go in there and butt some heads. Uh, you're waiting for an Amal Marshall or a Jack Jones interception. It's kind of it's kind of exciting. It's almost like watching Stanford play a couple years ago when their offense couldn't do anything and it was all their defense. It's like that's what, that's what it's like now. Our offense is struggling to find this real identity to really, you know, go out there and make the difference that everyone was expecting but now we're watching our defense just go out there set up and make plays which is really cool to see um how do we look it's kind of weird i can't say that we're ready to go out there and just win the rest of the pac-12 right now we are just not looking like the usc trojans that everyone was expecting i mean <laughs> right now we have people calling for matt fink to be the starter because you know everyone's overreacting and maybe some people are joking of course but you know he goes out there is like one for one for 12 yards and then has a 51 yard touchdown like on a, on a rush he, he ran for 51 yards on his first qb rush ever for a touchdown it was like what is going on dude looks like a gazelle dude dude has wheels he put on the jets like he was running him fast he was excited good for him he's no sam darnold but i mean i guess it's cool to see that we have this capable backup which is you know if sam darnold gets hurt like everyone else on our team if can matt fink hold down the fort hopefully maybe we'll see i mean it's oregon state it's so hard to judge against a team as bad as oregon state you can light a literal dumpster on fire and it would still play better football than oregon state up in corvallis so uh, it's kind of hard to say how we're going into this next week. We are right now an 11 and a half point favorite, which is very generous to us. They did uh, Utah did just lose to Stanford, which is good for us. Uh, makes us look a, little, a lot better with our uh, victory over Stanford. But it's over to say. USC always plays these weird games against Utah. Utah always loves to come out and just try to ruin our season. But they're going to be playing in the Coliseum. I think that gives us a huge heads up. There will actually be people in the stands for this game as opposed to last week's game where there was nobody at the Oregon State game. But I'm very excited. I will be going to this game. I'll be throwing another tailgate, so I'm very excited about that. You going to have a lot of friends, family out there. It's going to be just a lot of festivities. Hopefully, it's accompanied by an amazing game. I, I don't even want an amazing game. I want a blowout. Give me a blowout, USC. I want us to go out there, score 42 points, not let Utah get over the 10-point mark. I just want us to go out there and make a statement. This needs to be our statement game. This needs to be like, hey, put us back in the top 10. We deserve to be in the top 10. We are that caliber of team, and we need to start getting ready for the playoff. I think that's what needs to happen. Um, for our dude of the day, you know, the, just, just the, the doodler, uh, the dude award, out here I'm gonna have to give it to because there was really no huge standouts in this game I mean nobody played a perfect game except for one person and because he had one job he had one job and he did it absolutely perfectly his one job was to snap the ball and he did it better than uh, it was absolutely perfect there was uh, it, it's just such an amazing story I did not touch upon Jake Olson when he first went out during the Western Michigan game and snapped for the first time our blind uh, long snapper who has an amazing story 
Um, if you haven't seen it yet, they've done a lot of specials on ESPN. I actually had class with him last semester. He was actually in one of my biology classes. And yeah, I'd heard about him. Like I knew we had a, lo a blind long snapper. And when he came in wearing all the USC football stuff and along with his dog, I was like, oh, there he is. That's that's pretty cool. But you know, great guy. He's very intelligent as well. Um, it was great to go see him go out there, make another perfect snap. And now it's not just like, oh, it's not like he was going out there, snapped one ball, go okay, get good for him. Now he's gone out and done it twice, twice perfectly. And I think, you know, that's showing like, you know, it's not just some feel good story. This kid has talent. This kid has worked extremely hard and refined a talent that he has. So Jake Olson, boom, here is our dude award. Dude award. I can't say a word today. Uh, you are our dude of the day. Here's your trophy. Thank you so much for all your commitment and hard work to the USC Trojans and our football program. Your story is amazing. It's fantastic. And I mean, just watching you like on game day and everything like that, you're extremely talented, very camera friendly. You've got a talent in whatever field you want to pursue in the future. So good, uh, just good on you for all that. Thank you for being this type of story. We all need a story like this. But okay, so with USC winning, unfortunately UCLA had a bye week, so we can't say like there was a perfect weekend, plus Notre Dame won, so Notre Dame now has five wins. They've officially passed the number of wins they had last year. Good for you, Notre Dame, congrats. But with a USC victory means the return of the victory hat, kind of going to all of US all USC thing today but with that I will see you all next week very excited for the tailgate very excited for the game so fight on and beat the Utes I've been told I have great eyebrows <clears throat> la, 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 la. that was amazing I sound beautiful I should sing more all right let's do this